Tonight, in this edition of the primetime newscast on Equinox Television, the Commonwealth Secretary General to visit the Southwest Regional Headquarters of Boya. That is going to be tomorrow, Friday. In this newscast, we come back to the meeting that uh, took place between her and some opposition leaders in the nation's capital. And Barista Agbobala joins the Lego team of Patrice Nganang. It was during a meeting which took place in the nation's capital, Yaoundé. Today, we also talk about the possible liberation of Ahmed Abba Abba, that is the journalist with the Hausa service of RFE. It was during the court session that took place in the nation's capital, Yaoundé. Today, those are top stories. Stay with us for the details. We shall be right back. Good evening once again to you ladies and gentlemen. You are watching the primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Let's begin right away with the visit of the Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland that continued in the nation's capital. Yaoundé today she met with some opposition leaders. One of them was the chairman of the principal opposition political party, Ni John Frundi. We equally had uh, the meeting between her and uh, the UDC or CDU President Adam Mundam Joya, amongst many other actors of the civil society that was in the nation's capital Yaoundé today. Uh, shortly after the meeting, it was equally announced that she is going to be heading to Boya. That is going to be on the last day of her visit in the country. And uh, it should be noted that yesterday she equally met with some actors of the civil society. She met with the Commission for Human Rights and Freedoms in Cameroon and also the Konak officials in the nation's capital, Yaoundé. And talking about the meeting that she held with some institutions in the country, that was uh, the meeting between her and uh, the Konak authorities, the president of uh, the National Commission on Human Rights and Freedoms, and also the meeting between her and the National Communication Council. Uh, the uh, topic uh, that was under discussion was on good governance in the country, peace, uh, as well as uh, transparent elections in Cameroon. Uh, it was uh, indicated th during the meeting by the chairman of the National Commission on Human Rights and Freedoms that peace has been under threat in Cameroon for several years now. Those were the declarations of Chemuta Divine Banda, the chairman of uh, the National Commission on Human Rights and Freedoms that was during the meeting that took place in the nation's capital, Yaoundé, yesterday. And shortly after the meeting, we equally called the reaction or got the reaction of the Commonwealth scribe Patricia Scotland was speaking to our reporter Gizogu. Sharing our experiences, sharing our mistakes, sharing our opportunities to get things right, we believe in the Commonwealth we do far better by synthesizing, finding the synergies, and sharing what we have in common. And talking about some of the values of the Commonwealth of Nations that Cameroon has been a member for more than two decades now, there are peace, good governance, human rights that is practically absent in Cameroon. The aspect of peace was uh, brought to limelight during the meeting yesterday between the visiting scribe of the Commonwealth of Nations and the uh, National Commission on Human Rights and Freedoms. The chairman, Chemuta Divine Banda, indicated during the meeting of yesterday that the country's uh, territorial integrity is at stake and that peace has been under threat in Cameroon for several years now. Let's hear him in the following excerpt. Trying to sensitize and to uh, help various stakeholders to understand the role that they ought to be playing in order to foster human rights. And um, fostering human rights, because especially now, human rights constitute a, one of the three pillars of the United Nations system. The United Nations system emphasizes on security, development, and human <coughs> rights. And these are interdependent. And none of them will make progress without the other. So these are three solid pillars. And our preoccupation 
in Cameroon now is with ensuring that we have what was considered for long, the peace, the, the peace that you talked about yesterday, and which everybody knows about in Cameroon, that Cameroon has been a peaceful country, that peace is being disturbed. That's our greatest worry. For the last three or four years, uh, we have not been quite at peace. And so we are preoccupied with continuing to sensitize people on what we need to do to ensure peace. And various ingredients that must be there for us to have the peace that we're looking for. Uh, in our sensitization, we emphasize things that are common world values. So you've just talked of some of them, and I'll, I'll highlight a few here. We do not believe that we can have peace without development. We cannot have peace without development. And when we're talking about development here, we are referring to both physical, cultural, and spiritual development. And we believe that this, this development can be fostered through decentralization. And after meeting with some opposition leaders in Yaoundé today, the Commonwealth Secretary General announced uh, it was announced that she is going to be in the Southwest Regional Headquarters of Boya tomorrow. Now, we remain in that part of Cameroon. Apart from the timid school resumption in the two Anglophone regions of the country, the GC board is also dealing with threats by examiners to boycott the 2018 session of the examination. The chairman of the institution has announced that the pay package of the various examiners will be available by January 2018. That is five months to the kickoff of the exams. It was during the 49th ordinary session of the Council of the GC board which took place in Boya. Derek Jato has the details. Held behind closed doors, the 49th ordinary session of the Council of the Cameroon General Certificate of Education GCE board was dedicated purely to the examination of the 2018 budget as well as the 2018 GCE board examination registration. Talking to the press after the session, the board chair, Professor Peter Alange Abeti, started by congratulating the teachers and examiners for braving the obstacles brought by the Anglophone crisis. Our teachers, we are very proud of them. They maintain the high standards. And of course, we are appealing to parents, we are appealing to the students to devote themselves to teaching and the students should devote themselves to learning and that the outstation allowances owed examiners by the board will be paid in January 2018. But what guarantee is there to convince the academic family that this school year will not be punctured like that of last year? For some sources say the school resumption in the southwest region, for instance, is still at 10%. No, I think those statistics, whoever is holding that must be very wrong. I would rather say that um, uh, as of now, not less than 70% uh, of our students are going to school. We are not indifferent to the political atmosphere. What we are saying is that education is apolitical and would continue to remain apolitical. We are um, an examination board. The 2018 GCE board budget of 6 billion 454 million francs CFV was adopted. As we announced in the headlines, Barista Agbobala joins the legal team of uh, the civil society activist Patrice Nganang. He made the announcement in the nation's capital Yaoundé today as the team of lawyers and civil society actors fighting for his liberation. Uh, we're meeting in a meeting to talk about the case. Barista Agbobala denounced his arrest and detention and many other things. But Patrice Nganang, it should be noted, is being charged with for forgery, clandestine immigration and threatening the life of the President of the Republic of Cameroon. He was jailed since the 6th of December 2017.
We obviously will be coming back to that uh, meeting which took place in the nation's capital in our subsequent editions of the news. Now, the military tribunal has reduced the jail term of Ahmed Abba from 10 euros to 24 months. The journalist with the Aouza service of RFE would now be acquitted as he has already spent 20 ma 29 months in prison. Ahmed Abba has been in detention since July 30, 2015 on terrorism charges. He was in court today to appeal the 10-year jail term slammed on him. That was several months ago. International NGOs have qualified his arrest and detention as illegal. We now talk about something else. Uncertainty surrounds an alleged suicide case in Bamenda, where in the chief town of the northwest region of the country, a man was found hanging onto a rope on a mango tree. That was an incident which occurred early yesterday, Wednesday. Residents of Manchu Street, that is the locality where the incident occurred, are still not convinced that the man took away his own life. Details in the following report. <laughs> Another calamity befalls Bamenda. This time, inhabitants of Manchu neighborhood are trooping into this compound to witness an alleged suicide case. The victim called von Alfred in his 30s was hanging on a mango tree in front of his house. Relatives say that they made the macabre discovery early Wednesday. Her testimony is similar to that of a neighbor who says that he is not only taken by surprise, von Alfred was in good health the previous day. <laughs> After a keen look at the victim, many were left with the assumption that from Alfred did not kill himself. They said that they are still to understand how he could have hung himself with the leg almost touching the ground. From Alfred, according to locals, showed no signs of distress. Gendarme officers were on the scene to investigate the matter. A bitter pill there for relative to swallow. Now, the lifeless body of another man was equally discovered in the early hours of this morning with a rope hung round the neck of the victim. The man was lifeless. As I indicated, he was not identified. It took place at in a building around the All Saint Church Bayele, that is a locality in the chief town of the northwest region of Cameroon, the second incident in just two days. A free room apartment, we are now in the Mongo division of Cameroon, has been reduced to ashes following a fire disaster that occurred in Lum, and most material damage was recorded. The cause of the inferno up to now remains a mystery. A reporter in on and as it tells us more in the following story. Only roof sheets and planks were retrieved from the ravaged three rooms apartment. Nothing else was fished out. Inhabitants who noticed the inferno raised alarm that assembled many who took part in the fire quenching exercise. As a result, the spread of the flames was limited. If not of the population, four other surrounding structures would have been converted to ashes. The cause of the fire was unclear. Inhabitants speculate it could have resulted due to poor electrification. Absence of a firefighting unit is bitterly decried by the population of Loom. The divisional officer admitted the non existence of the firefighting brigade but did not promise one in the nearest future. He rather hailed amalgamated efforts by the population to stop the spread and limit devastations of fire disasters. The origin of the fire is yet to be determined. 
In Cameroon, several campaign promises are hardly fulfilled as some politicians disappear into the thin air shortly after being voted into office. There is therefore the need for the electorates to hold the elected accounted or accountable for their actions as Cameroon prepares to get into an electoral euro. Come 2018, a local non-governmental organization in the southwest regional headquarters of Boya organized a workshop. In that regard, a reporter there Richard to tell us more. We must often, once elected, the link between them and their electorate is disconnected for their interests. Because there is a social contract between the elected and the electorate. We don't want a case where we see politicians come back on the eve of elections to convince people either with bags of salt, cube, cubes of soap and all that to, to, to buy their consciences to vote. To us that is not uh, democracy. And waiting to resurface on the eve of another election to seek for another mandate in most cases spark violence. We can create room for violence if not properly uh, understood. So our hope is that uh, the electorate can uh, get their, uh, those elected to power and also hold them to account so that we can prevent issues of violence in future. Organized by Reach Out Cameroon, this workshop that has brought together civil society organizations, political parties and the media on participatory democracy and electoral process, according to Mwa Elvis, the assistant executive director is a true path to development. We want people to vote because they understand that the political agenda presented by this political party is what will help their community to grow out of uh, poverty and get uh, to the level of development that they want it to be. With their capacities now built, the participants say they are going back to their various communities more equipped. I'll be able to take this message from a consortium of very committed ladies and gentlemen to be able to monitor and evaluate uh, politicians and uh, that's what we need. If you move forward, if you mobilize, if you sensitize, if you educate, I mean there is conviction. The end result is for these political leaders to be sincere to the people that elected them into office, which is a true picture of democracy. It is not only in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon that we are talking about tough times. Dealers in perishable products say that turnover in some parts of the country, precisely in the economic capital, Douala, say that things are not getting better. The case in point in this newscast is tomatoes inundating markets and begging for clients at very low prices. Babla Jonathan compiled the following report. <laughs> Tomatoes, highly consumed perishable products in Cameroon and her neighbors. Much of what is produced in the west, southwest, and other parts of Cameroon are exported to neighboring Nigeria. But today, because of the unstable socio political and security situation in the northwest, southwest, and other regions of the country, internal markets are overflowed with tomatoes. This is the biggest market of perishable products in the whole of the Central African sub-region, the Sandaga market in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, and tomatoes in particular are in very high supply in this market and at this uh, end of year uh, period 2017 supply is very high and demand very low and coupled with the fact that Cameroon's borders with some of its neighbors like Nigeria have remained uh, close, the prices have significantly dropped. Last year, December, actually, tomato was 10,000 francs and 11, 12 even. But this year, you can see the highest price is 35. About 12 trucks like those ones that you're seeing behind me loaded with tomatoes notably from the west region of the country enter this market every day supplies are now compelled to go by auction sale in order to make a meager profit <laughs> The situation has made business a little more profitable for retailers. 
While local consumers are celebrating the drastic drop in prices, many of them wishing that it should not change. But for the interests of producers, suppliers, and more importantly, the economy of the country as a whole, trade stakeholders are urging government to restore peace and order in the two Anglophone regions for things to return to normalcy. That is the situation in some markets here in the economic capital, Douala, during this festive period. And talking about the festive period, personnel at the National Fighting, uh, Firefighting Brigade in the central region of Cameroon have offered Christmas and New Year gifts to some 30 families of deceased firefighters. The donation was to enable orphans and widows of the deceased firefighting personnel joined others to celebrate the end of year feast. Innocent Aze has the details. Smai gradually returns on the faces of orphans and widows of deceased personnel of the National Firefighting Brigade. They will join others to have a splendid celebration of end of year feast. The initiative of this donation, according to Colonel Martin Mbara, representative of the commander of the firefighting unit, is to notify the orphans and widows of his deceased colleagues. They are precious and indelible. In total, 30 families received the donation comprising a bag of rice, 5 liters of vegetable oil and a carton of sugar each. These were accompanied by an envelope. The beneficiaries do not hide their job. Following the footsteps of their deceased parents, some of the orphans carried out demonstration on life-saving operation. To them, with the skills acquired, they will be able to save a life in school and elsewhere when need be. The orphans thanked the personnel of the firefighting brigade for their yearly gesture to orphans and widows of their departed colleagues. And the Limbe One municipality is still to have a befitting council hall amidst other challenges plaguing the said locality. During the council session that saw the adoption of over 650 million francs CFA as the council's budget for the year 2018, it was announced that the construction of a new council hall is going to be the area's municipality for the year 2018. Details with Davis Maimo. Situated at the heart of the city of Limbe, the Limbe One Subdivisional Council has as major project to construct a befitting one-story council chambers with three conference hall to serve the public and equally add as income-generating mechanism to the council, costing some 340 million safety francs plus. A one-story building that we have three halls, 26 offices, toilets. We pray that before the end of our mandate, this project come to reality thought it wise to visit one of our projects. That's why we came to visit our council chambers. Councillors of the Limbe One Council say the completion of the chambers will save the council from embarrassment as the council has been enjoined from the benevolent of the city council by using one of its structures since its creation in 2007. And my impressions here are very satisfactory. Uh, we have seen what the council is, uh, what the building looks like. We have examined uh, some of the features, and I think they are fine. This is what all of us have been crying for. To have the befitting council building for the building. What a very good impression. And I want to say good to the mayor. With a budget of 664 million safety francs, the Limbe One Council will equally have to maintain the roads in the quarters, fight urban disorder, especially within the commercial motorbike sector, not leaving out hygiene and sanitation. However, the Mayor Rodanin Bua Mukaku say the Anglophone crisis greatly affected the council in 2017. The subdivisional council of Limbe One Subdivision is expected to improve on the livelihood of the populace. 
On that note, we come to the end of this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Televiewers, we thank you so much for joining us. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye. Equinox Télévision, au-delà de l'image.